Now let's go back to this list again and let's go back to second category. I mean, you see individuals like Tom Lantis. You, of course, you see Dennis Hester there. There is a box there with a question mark. There is no picture there. Today, I want to talk about who this box belonged to, why it had question mark to start with, and why it's time, now it's the time, to expose who this person is and why he or she was included on this list in my State Secrets Privilege Gallery. I'm going to start with explanation why initially I put a question mark there. Around middle to end of February, this was right around the time when I had reported these wrongdoing to the FBI officials in higher offices. These were called SES, senior executive level offices. During this period, the agent, the special agent I worked with in Washington's field office had contacted another agent, and this person was a special agent in charge in Chicago, FBI's Chicago field office, and had told them about me and, and the abilities I had from speed reading to analysis, and had asked him to consider using me for a very, very important investigative files that these two agents had previously jointly worked on. This agent, special agent in charge, in the Chicago's field office, his name was Joel Roberts. And the urgency for him to send this doc these documents, these files to me, was that as it had happened before during the Clinton administration, with the Bush administration as well, the executive branch was trying to kill this investigation and shut it down. Therefore, they needed to gather more damning, conclusive evidence against the targets of their investigations. And their investigations involved both Americans, in this case officials, and foreign entities and foreign operatives. So the special agent in charge, Joel Roberts, uh, called me up and said he had sent me via secure channels seven random documents from one particular investigative file. He wanted me, and again, the date range for these documents gathered was from late 1998 until 2001. He asked me to very quickly, as fast as I could, to go through the material, including foreign language recordings, and give him a quick feedback and analysis on what I had found to be pertinent and why. Basically, it was his way of testing me and see if I were as good as uh, the agent I worked with had bragged about. I went through these random uh, files, individual files, including audio files, and including uh, audio files that were in other languages. And immediately I started typing up my report on very pertinent information that I was listening to. A couple of days later, the special agent in charge, Joel Roberts from the Chicago field office, set up a conference call, scheduled a conference call via secure lines in the FBI's Washington field office and Chicago office and asked me to tell him during this conference call what I found to be the most important and why. The counterintelligence agent I worked with in the Washington field office was also present, and his name was Dennis Sasher from Washington's field office during this conference call. And I gave my report verbally to the agent in Chicago, Joel Roberts, and I said the most significant information here has to do with this U.S. representative, his name is John, and uh, from all the training I had received before analyzing counterintelligence files, certain foreign entities were in the middle of hooking this particular U.S. representative whose name is John. During my training, I had, I had been instructed on important phrases, words, 
and methods where foreign operatives or in some cases criminal operatives uh, hooked hooked uh, US government officials whether they are in Congress or whether they're in executive branch it's a very interesting process it starts out very smoothly in most cases the people who are target let's say the officials they don't even realize that they are being hooked maybe it starts with small favors maybe it starts with um, you know given you know receiving certain gifts uh, but it usually starts very smoothly and something that may not jump at people as oh this may be for nefarious reasons and from that point on slowly the hooking process gets faster and and it gets to be more serious and by the time the target realizes what had taken place it's already too late he or she has been hooked so during this conference call i told the agent i said well this guy this u.s representative john is uh being hooked up by uh by a woman um i'm assuming he may be married by a foreign woman um, and and uh, and their the targets uh, were discussing how to videotape audio tape and basically gather and monitor everything so they could use this John his relationship with this woman and considering that he's a representative and at this point I didn't even know if this person, the, the, the American, the official, was the representative in the state legislative branch or what it was in Washington, D.C. All I had, and this was on purpose, this was kept from me on purpose by the agent because I was supposed to pass the test or not. So I explained all that and the agent chuckled, uh, the agent in Chicago. So that's very good. However, um, I will have to tell you this person that you're talking about uh, is not named John, it's Jan. See, because in various languages that I speak, those languages are gender neutral. So we don't have his or her or she or he. There is either a name or it is something like it, okay? So for me, all I heard was, and this was by accented individual, John. So I assume this congressional person was a man named John. Well, it was because of their accent. They were talking about a congresswoman in Washington, D.C., and her name was Jan, short for Janice. He had caught me off guard because I said, well, that's interesting because the hooking up process, they are using this woman, and this is her name, and this is her nationality, uh, I mean, I was puzzled for a second. And then I was told that, yes, this person, Jan, had was married, but it was a fake marriage. It was not a real marriage. And in fact, she was a closet lesbian. And these foreign entities, this was not the first time. They had, in the past, used female baits to hook her, including certain people who worked in her office before she came to Washington, D.C. Anyhow, obviously I had passed the test because the next morning when I reported back to work, I came back to my office. I saw that the special agent in charge from Chicago had sent me what he referred to the mother load file. This file went dated from 1998 till 2002 and it contained over 5,000 documents. Now, some of these documents were audio in nature, and each one could be anywhere in terms of length from 200 minutes to as short as one minute. And looking at these, this file and the size of it, I kind of panicked and I said, I mean, this is a huge file, and I have other assignments because I'm working on counterterrorism cases, I'm working on the cases that are directly related to Washington, D.C. office. And uh, the special agent in charge said, no worries. This is the most important case right now you're working because it involves Chicago. It involves several officials. And they, and by they, he meant the White House. And at the time, it was the Bush administration. They are going to shut down this investigation and stop us from monitoring these people, these criminals in the next two, three months. 
so I'm going to talk with your superiors and I want to make sure you're given enough time to work on this case. So I began working on this case um, furiously and I started discovering some amazing uh, espionage related activities, criminal related activities, not only by this particular target, but other US officials and not only US officials, but also this woman's, this congresswoman's husband. 